Now, when we filmed the rest of the section back in 2014, we were amazed at how well the standard model fit together. And by and large, it still does. It still expends an awful lot of observations in a self-consistent and mathematically very simple framework. So it's still a very strong theory. However, there is one discrepancy, one thing that doesn't quite fit, that's become a bit clearer over the last five or six years. I'm now filming this in 2020. And this is a discrepancy in the value of the Hubble constant. Remember, we can measure the Hubble constant in a variety of different ways. One way is using the cosmic microwave background, as we've just talked about, which is measuring it over the entire length of the universe back to the just after the Big Bang. Or you can measure it nearby using things like Cepheid variables or the tip of the red giant bra. And the discrepancy is that these two seem to be giving different answers. Here is a graph showing the values of Hubble constant measured using Cepheid variables in the blue and from the cosmic microwave background in black and tip of the red giant branch in red by year of publication. So back in uh, 2001 the Hubble constant measured by Cepheid variables was about 72 with quite large error bars. As time has gone on Better and better measurements using combination of Cepheid variables and supernovae have produced more and more accurate measurements, which have ended up at about 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec with much smaller uncertainties. Likewise, the cosmic microwave background, with the launch of the WMAP satellite and then the data from the uh, Planck satellite, the data here has got much better and been analyzed more carefully and the error bars have also gone down. They're now the most accurate measurement, but they're sitting at much smaller measurements, about 67. And the tip of the red giant branch is sitting somewhere in between. Here's a recent compilation of a whole bunch of different measurements from different techniques. So first of all, here are measurements from the Planck, so the best microwave background measurements, and this is measurement using baryon acoustic oscillations plus big blank nuclear synthesis and weak gravitational lensing. And these are both ways of measuring things that are primarily focused on the very early universe. You're looking at the expansion rate over time going all the way back to just after the Big Bang and high redshifts. Then you've got a bunch of measurements at the local universe, local being out to maybe a few hundred million light years, so not that local. So the shoes surveys using supernovas plus Cepheid variables. This is using the tip of the red giant branch. This is gravitational lensing. This is mega mazes. And there are two methods we haven't talked about, uh, using Myra variables here and using surface brightness fluctuations down there. But what you can see is the different methods all measuring things locally tend to give values about 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec, whereas the values based on the early universe seem to give more like 67 or 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Now you can try combining these various late methods. A lot of them use the same calibrators, so they might be calibrated off the large measure lake cloud or the same uh, Cepheid variables, so you can't treat them as independent. But you can put together three separate independent measurements. This is using just Cepheids, this is using tip of the red giant branch, and this is using Myra variables. Likewise, the gravitational lensing and the use of mega mazes are quite independent and don't rely on any of what's previously been done. And even these independent techniques using different methods and not sharing any possible systematic errors in common seem to be giving the same big answer. So formally, this is what we call a, you know, roughly a five sigma result, which means the chances of it being just a statistical fluke are tiny, far less than 0.01%. But of course the whole game here is systematic errors. For example, changes in dust from near or far away, or uh, maybe different types of Cepheid variables in the early and late universe. But the fact that you see the discrepancy in so many different measurements, ranging from gravitational lensing to supernovae Cepheids, different types of variables, mega mazes, and you see two in, uh, all the different micro microwave satellite measurements give the same thing, as does surveys for baryon acoustic oscillations. It's beginning to look like it might be real. So, is this discrepancy real? Well, it kind of looks real. We're seeing it in lots of different data sets analysed by different people using different telescopes and different independent methods. 
it's still not a very big discrepancy, but statistically it seems to be pretty significant, pretty real. Now it could well be that another five years from now we'll have found some bizarre systematic effect that makes it all go away, and it is a bit worrying that the tip of the red giant branch gives you values that sit right in the middle of the other sets of data. But assuming it's real, what could it mean? Well, one possibility is that most of the local measurements are made within, say, uh, 100 million light years of the Earth, and maybe there's something unusual about the expansion of space near us. We're in some sort of cosmic bubble. This is not what we normally think in cosmology. We think we're in a typical place and there's no real evidence of this, but maybe there is something unusual about us, and so the Hubble constant really is different in the local neighbourhood, the local neighbourhood being the nearest 100 million light years or so. Unlikely, and not consistent with all the discrepancy data, some of which is measured beyond those distances, but possible maybe. Or maybe it's telling us something deeper, that maybe, for example, dark matter changes in its properties as time goes on, or dark energy misbehaves in some way, or the geometry of the universe isn't quite as simple as we thought it's going to be. Maybe general relativity needs some additions on these very large scales. We don't know. It could well be that the whole thing will turn out to be just a mistake, but if it's real, it could be a sign of new physics 